Dajiahao, I'm Nathan Rich, aka Wu Guo Da Wang. With the attack on Huawei intensifying, people have been scrambling to understand the situation. The end of the world! The end of Huawei! War! Green reptile aliens! There are a lot of extreme ideas out there right now. But when I look at the situation, I definitely see a potential upside to all of this. This international political game is being played so quickly that it's impossible to predict what will happen next. But if everything lines up just right, the squeeze on Huawei could lead to a revolution. This year, Trump intensified the attacks on Huawei to such a degree that we may be entering a new era of political awkwardness, to say the least. You probably know that the American government has been ordering or encouraging companies to abandon Huawei. Most notably, Google is lessening its relationship with Huawei. There's been some confusion online about what exactly that means, but let's skip the details and just assume Google will never have anything to do with Huawei ever again. I've seen articles online that say Huawei is already doomed. I've seen some that say it could scrape by. But there's another side to all of this. It's something I haven't seen mentioned elsewhere. Google makes an OS called Android, which is a modified version of Linux. There's a base version of it which will always be open source and freely available to Huawei, no matter what Google or the US government wants. That's how Linux's license works. The main difference between that version and the normal Android version is in the version that's on your phone, Google has added their own bloatware, like Google Mail and other stuff you can't remove. Now, don't get me wrong, even though Google Mail is one of the most pointless apps ever, Google Maps is good and there are some other good Google products. So Huawei gets put in a situation where it can develop its own OS further and release phones that don't have these Google apps on them. There are some other options, but that's the one most people are discussing. You know, it's interesting being in China because there are alternatives to everything. In the West, you've got YouTube and BitChute and there's pretty much nothing else. Where else are you going to post videos and monetize them? In China, there's Bilibili, Sohu, Yoku, Sigua, Toutiao, AC Fun, on and on. Some of these platforms have really cool features that YouTube doesn't have. And it's like that with almost everything. While people in the West still use extremely outdated software like Facebook Messenger or Google Chat, China has been using much, much better software for years now. So the question is, why haven't these Chinese companies really pushed out to the world? Why haven't they put in more of an effort to dominate the global market? China is a massive portion of the world's population and wealth. Nearly all of the target audience of these apps is Chinese. They aren't really that concerned about the global market because there's a much lower hanging fruit right here. And that's the way companies have viewed things in the past. But with this new Huawei thing, we're really flirting with change. But why is this even happening? Well, the US is either using this whole Huawei attack to sweeten an upcoming trade deal for monetary gain, or to protect its vast, wide, international espionage campaigns. Which one is it? Well, we know that the American government's favorite pastimes have included tracking phones, even when they're off, or using them to record conversations, again, even when the phones are off. We know that they monitor Google apps specifically. In fact, the list of ways that the American government spies on Americans and foreigners, and yes, Chinese people, is so extensive that it's way past 1984 status. Does everyone have amnesia or something? We've known this for years. We also know that all American companies can at any time be compelled to provide any private information that the government requests and be forced to deny it. In fact, it happens extremely frequently. So don't even start with this whole strange idea that suddenly spying might enter the picture soon. The entire attack on Huawei, which is being disguised as a security measure, is in my opinion, only for use in trade negotiations. Trump has already talked about using this as a trade negotiation. Just think about that. If it were really a security concern, why would he be willing to drop it for money? So what happens next? In the past, 
China tech going toe-to-toe -to -toe with American tech would have meant certain defeat. But now, the tech sector in China has a choice. Now, it can not only go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, there's a good chance it can win this war of technologies. And in around 10 more years, it will be a certainty. If Huawei makes its own operating system based on Linux or an open source Android, making an app market is trivial. There's already so many alternatives to Google Maps, including Chinese ones you haven't even heard of yet. So then the question will become, if Huawei releases a phone that's better than anything else on the market and cheaper, with all the same apps available except some Google ones, how much extra will you pay to get a worse phone that does come with Google Mail when the phone already checks email anyway? You see the problem? This is how tech wars are won. Does anyone remember back when Americans used to prefer to buy things made in America? Ever wonder why no one ever did that with electronics? That's because no one wants to pay more for a worse product. Well, maybe Apple customers, but we're not talking about them right now. And the more units Huawei sells in this way, the weaker Google would become. The weaker their proprietary Android build becomes, and the less people use their services. And ironically, the more they will want to come crawling back to Huawei. As someone who uses WeChat for my communications, when I'm forced to use an old rubbish technology like Google Chat or Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp, it's like going from cars to horses with buggies. It really is. And if Chinese innovators at Tencent can produce WeChat, Huawei can make a better app store, that's for sure. In the end, consumers will always seek out what's a better deal. That's the nature of capitalism. So if Huawei decides to fight this attack by making its own version of Android, I think it has a much better chance to come out on top than many people think. If Huawei plays its cards right by focusing on strategy rather than the tactics, we could be facing a new revolution, a new challenge to the monopolies in the West held by Google, Facebook, and Twitter. Then again, maybe I'm just optimistic. As a computer nerd, I'm always looking for healthy competition. And maybe Huawei will be forced to provide just that competition. You never know. Well, I've got a lot more to say about this, but for now, I'm going to take a break. Maybe go look through a Huawei catalog and buy some stuff I don't need. And also, I've noticed a lot of interesting comments being posted on these Huawei videos. Uh, a lot of people think that they've got smoking guns and that they've proven this or proven that, and they link these articles, and uh, almost everything that I've seen is just ridiculous. So if you guys want me to do a video talking about the comments that I've seen and my sort of answers to those, let me know. Thanks, everybody. See ya.